Welcome everyone to Orange Audubon Society educational webinars. Tonight we're going to be doing feeding birds and project feeder watch. Thank you for joining us. Next. The mission of Orange Audubon Society is to promote public understanding of and interest in wildlife and the environment that supports it. Our educational programs foster the recognition of the tangible and intangible values in the remaining natural areas of Florida and the world and our responsibility for the conservation of the Earth's natural eco ecosystems and the services that they provide for the health of the planet. Next. So we're um, doing this pro uh, program in conjunction with the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and the lab's mission is to interpret and conserve the Earth's biological diversity through research, education, and citizen science focused on birds. Next, please. And the mission of the K-12 education program within Cornell is to create innovative resources and training that build science skills while inspiring young people to connect to local habitats, explore biodiversity, engage in citizen science projects. And there's a lot of resources on the Cornell K-12 education site, and I recommend that you check it out. Next. So um, the K-12 Cornell education website does have a lot of curriculum resources. There's kits you can buy, there's free resources, and there's education training even a summer training you can sign up for, which I highly recommend because I got to go. Next. So their philosophy is to engage students, to allow them to explore, which will lead to inquiry. And you'll see that in what we're gonna go over tonight. Next. So why feed birds? Because this is about feeding birds and you might, be a little unsure about doing that on a school campus, but speaking from personal experience, it's it's a valuable, valuable thing you can do with students if your administration allows you to. So this will give you some, some um, evidence on, um, to present to your administration on why it's a valuable resource. So we'll go to the next slide. So this slide has a humorous part for us in Florida. Um, so if we lived up north, birds would have to be dealing with the upper left in many places. And so winter time is a really good time to feed birds because resources can be very, very limited. Now here in Florida, not so much. Um, the picture on the right is a bird that's here in the, in the winter time called an orange crowned warbler. And resources are still here, but they're not as, as abundant as they are in our spring and summer and fall. So it's still a good time to be feeding birds. Next. And another reason why to feed birds on your campus is a feeder brings the birds to you so the students can get much, much better chances to observe them and observe their behavior. Let's look at the next slide. So here's some benefits of feeding birds with your students. It's exciting, it's real world. You never know what's gonna show up. It's an opportunity to study wild animals. It's relatively low cost. You can do it year round if you want to. It does help birds. It definitely sparks kids' curiosity. They're, they're gonna see things and wanna ask questions. And it does connect kids to the local environment because you're gonna start noticing trends and you know certain birds will come to your feeder, some won't, and things will change as the seasons change. Next. So why are birds a good uh, topic of study? for your classes. Next, because birds are everywhere. They're one of the easier animals that you'll be able to observe no matter where you are. Um, now, a lot of people are what we call bird blind. If you don't pay attention to birds, you don't notice that they're there. But once you start paying attention and you start doing projects with birds with your students, you're gonna notice a lot more birds every day. And your students will too. Okay, next. So there's some basic types of feeders when you're thinking about planning a place to set up feeders on your campus. And um, they're all different prices, but there's a tube feeder, which you see here. And this can have different size little ports and some birds can't get to them as easy. So it might be more advantageous for smaller birds. 
We have suet feeders, which is great for putting suet cakes in. You can even make your own suet cakes. And I'm gonna show you where you get information on, on how to do those kinds of things, or you can buy them. There's platform feeders, which are flat. Some like this has a hopper, which the seed kind of goes out a little at a time. And then it even has suet cages on the side. You can get them where there's no little hopper and it's just a, you can build these yourself, just a flat tray. And that's really the best kind of feeder for the greatest variety of birds. And of course there's nectar feeders too. So these are just some options that you have. Next. So these are just some photographs um, of birds at the different feeders. So the blue jay here is at a tube feeder, but this one's designed for dispersing peanuts, which they love. Um, this is a, a modified platform feeder because it has the little tray at the bottom. We have, this is a suet log, and you can even make these yourself by taking a, you know, a log or a branch and drilling holes and plugging it with, make your own suet. Woodpeckers absolutely love it. And here's another type of platform or tray feeder. This one has a little cover on it to keep the weather out. And here's a little um, hummingbird feeder there, which attracts other kinds of birds too. Let's go to the next slide. So birds have different seed preferences. And again, this, this program will be recorded so you can go back and watch it later. And I'm also gonna direct you to the website where you can look at this. In all honesty, if you wanna just pick one kind of seed to give birds, it would be the top one, which is the black oil sunflower seeds. Most birds will eat it. Might not be their favorite, but if it's there and there's nothing else, they'll eat it. Um, this red Milo, birds don't generally eat that. So avoid mixes that have that in that. It's usually the, the less expensive mixes and it'll just be wasted and go on the ground. Um, some birds like corn. Um, there's a seed called millet. And as we talk about painted bunting, that is one of their favorite seeds. So let's go to the next slide. What if your school says no feeders? Well, you have options. Um, you can use native plantings. Birds will come to native plantings if you choose wisely. And I'm gonna show you where to look and, and know what to get. So here's a painted bunting from my area. And they absolutely love, this is a native plant called Biden's Alba, and it gets these little seeds that stick to you. And painted bunnies just love to eat those. So you can have that and still get painted bunnies, even if you're not allowed to put seed out. Let's look at the next slide. Here's another thing you can do. You can have a bird bath. And a bird bath also will attract birds. And there's birds that don't eat seed. This bird here is a summer tanager, and it doesn't eat seeds. It eats insects. But this is a picture from my bird bath. And I had about a month where this bird came to my bird bath every day because it needed that water and take a bath. So that's definitely a good option. If you get a bird bath, if you're able to, if you can get some kind of feature, which they sell, a dripper or something that wiggles the water, that makes the birds more enticed to go see because they see the motion of the water. But even without that, bird bath is good. Just keep it rinsed out every day. Next slide. So here's your website for doing Project Feeder Watch. And let me explain what that is. So this really makes your uh, feeding station connect with the sciences because here's where your students can do studies and contribute data to um, a really long running um, scientific study of people's feeders. They've been running this for quite a long time. And this website, um, Project Feeder Watch, gives you everything you need to know to, to run a project. And again, you don't have to have feeders. You can use plantings and water features and still study the birds that come to your campus. So um, when you go to this website, you'll see different tabs they can go to. There's a very small charge for signing up. It supports the lab. It's, it's like $15 a year, um, minimal. I think it's still very much worth it. So let's go to the next slide. And why, why the feeder watch? You, you could just put feeders out and just study it, but feeder watch, your, your students are engaged in community science. And the more you do it, you can actually enter the data in 
on screen in front of your students, it's powerful. I was out of school yesterday and we were doing eBird and actually it's the second time I've been to that school. And the students asked me when we went out to look for birds and count, are we gonna send it to the scientists? They already knew, they were third grade. So it'll, it'll become very powerful. You can, I can show you where you can look at past data. Um, if you've done, if you do this multiple years, you can pull up all your previous data and you can see trends. You can look at other people's data, not specifically with their names, but like from your county or your state, from other states. It does teach your students a scientific protocol. There's a specific way to do feeder watch, which I'll go over and encourage inquiry because they're going to have questions. Well, why is this bird chasing this bird? Or why does this bird not go eat the seed, but that bird does? Or why does this bird eat the seed off the ground and this other bird grab a seed and run off, you know, fly off with it? So it's going to, they're going to start asking questions. So let's look at the next slide. All right. Here's the website. So you're gonna see, um, here's just some of the tabs. They'll have the top 25 birds seen for the whole project. They'll have summaries by state or province in Canada. They have a participant map so they can see where they fall. They have a tab that you, you can get information on common birds that come to feeders. Um, this is a little blog, the bird spotter. That if you there's ID help here if you have a bird and you're confused about what it is. Oh, there's the blog. Um, and there's a cam where you can watch feeders at different locations. So, so I think that one might be like in Canada somewhere. So being here in Florida, that would be real exciting for the kids to see that. Let's look at the next slide. So there's a tab that you can look up food and feeder preferences of common birds. So if, if the students want to know how to attract a particular kind of bird, here's where you're gonna look. So let's go ahead and click on the next one. And this is really cool. So you can um, filter where you are, Southeast, for example, what kind of food you wanna use. You could do it that way. What kind of feeder, you could filter the type of feeder. You could even filter this and just have all the types of food. So like when I put it on Southeast black oil sunflower seeds and all types, these are the different birds that could be attracted. Now, that being said, the Southeast is a really big place. So you have to click on the individual birds. For example, I know for, for a fact here in Central Florida, if we had a fox sparrow, that'd be a pretty big deal. So it's not 100%, you know, for your area, but it can definitely help you narrow down what you might see or, or if you wanna track something in particular. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So let's say your, your students are really interested in the Baltimore Oriole, which is a bird that does visit Central Florida. So you could see um, in the winter where it's located. You can see what type of foods it would be located, what it would prefer. So this is a bird that likes fruit and it will go to a, um, a hummingbird type feeder, um, but it also could go to a platform feeder if you offer different kinds of fruit that are appropriate for it, like oranges they love. So that's real helpful to know. Okay, let's go look at the next slide. Of course, your students can make feeders and there's plans on the Project Feeder Watch website on how you can make some feeders. You can even upcycle like your soda bottles and things like that. And that's a real good thing to do. Let's go to the next slide. Now there's some things to think about that come up and so birds do crash into windows. That's something that's known to happen. So this is straight from the, the lab. It, it says, ideally you want your feeder closer than five meters, at ideally less than one meter. So the birds can't build up speed and crash in like if at a feeder and a bird of prey comes and it gets scared, they're gonna just fly and they don't look where they're flying. They're just taking off. And if your feeder is um, further than five meters, it builds up too much speed and it can have a, a deadly consequence. So that's what they recommend. Now, um, some of you may have gotten the free window feeder. And if you haven't, I'm gonna explain in the end how to get one. That's not an issue because it's right on the window. So they're, they're not gonna crash going to it. They kind of, they see it and they slow down. It's, it's when they're, they're flying away from an enemy. Let's go to the next slide. 
So here's a common question. What do you do about squirrels if you have squirrels around where you are going to be feeding? And this, oh, this is an age old battle. So um, let me show you some suggestions in the next slide. So consider using a baffle or a squirrel proof feeder. Squirrel proof feeders can get kind of expensive. Um, a baffle is something that goes over the feeders where they can't climb on top. Those squirrels are pretty smart. That can make an interesting study too, just watching different ways to try to deter squirrels. You want the feeders about 10 feet from anything they can jump from, whether it's side of a building, a tree, because they can jump pretty far. They want that seed. They're pretty, pretty, um, pretty inventive on how to get, get it. So here's another suggestion. If you go to the next slide. Here on the community tab in Project Feeder Watch, they do have tips from feeder watchers, people that have been doing this for a while. So if we go to the next slide, here's a tip from one of the um, feeder watchers about how to make your own slinky squirrel baffle. So you can get idea, and that's not the only one in there. There's, there's several different ideas. And that can be a fun kind of a scientific study. Like if you do have problems with squirrels, and you know, how can we, how can we uh, keep the squirrels from eating the food for the birds? So that, that could be a fun thing to do. Let's go to the next slide. So when should you feed birds? Um, if you live, you know, up north, often it's winter time, but you can feed birds anytime that you want. So go to the next slide. If you have a limited budget and you only want to feed birds for a limited time, the Project Feeder Watch actually runs from November to April. Um, and being it's November now, you might think, oh, it's too late. No, you, you can do the program as long as you want to. You can do it for one week. You can do it for four months, however long you want to run it. So maybe you're watching this now. You can plan and maybe do it in January. And you'll still have time to do a nice little study. And maybe, you know, after doing it one year, then you'll do it longer the next time. But here we have a, a feeding station set up at a third grade classroom. And they set this up and they didn't have any birds. So that led to some inquiry about what do we need to do different? And that's, that, that created an opportunity for them to learn about habitat. So let's go to the next slide. Here's another issue. This, this class said, we're not getting any birds. So I'm sure you can see they have an unwelcome visitor. We'll go to the next slide. The next picture is actually from my house. Had the same situation. So if there's a, a local raptor, like a, you know, like a Cooper's hawk or a red shoulder hawk that kind of likes hanging around your feeder, um, yeah, you're probably not going to get birds for a while. And you can just take the feeders down, let that bird of prey find somewhere else to go. Because if there's no little birds coming to your feeders anymore, it'll find somewhere else to go. But let's talk about habitat. So putting up feeders, Actually, before you even do it, you want to think about where to set them. That brings up habitat, which is our next slide. So habitat is a place where an organism lives. It's made of four components. So go ahead and click on that. You need the birds need food. They need water. They need cover. And they need space. So if you can provide all of those, that'd be awesome. If you can provide some of them, you still will get some birds come to visit. So let's go ahead and, and look at how you would do this. Well, first of all, you ask your, your kids, if you live in the city, is this a habitat? Well, let's look at the next slide. Yeah, it does. It has food, water, cover, and space. Might not be the ideal habitat, but a lot of birds can make do in the city if they're provided with those things. So let's look at planning habitat for your feeder situation. So here's kind of a schoolyard. And yeah, it's a habitat. They can put some water in there. They, and they have some cover. They can add some feeders. And there's some trees nearby. So they have what, what it needs. So let's go to the next slide. They can also improve that. So here's something you can do as you're doing your plan to create a habitat list. So the kids can brainstorm with you or they can do this in groups. Um, like one group could take food and one could take cover, water and space and you can bring it all together. 
and think about what on our campus, what can we offer for food? Remember, it doesn't have to be seed. It could be berries. It could be places where worms or insects could live. A lot of birds eat insects. And so um, let's look at the next slide. Um, doing a plan. So then you make a formal plan before you, you know, work to create your habitat. And then next, here's some student versions of the same thing. Get them involved. They'll have a good buy into this. And then they'll, I know when I did one at my old school, um, the kids took care of it because because they helped put it together. They really did. Let's look at the next slide. And then put your plan into action. Create your habitat with, with your feeding station. And let's look at the next one. So to do feeder watch, you're gonna count the birds at your designated site between November and April, no more than two days in a week. And you have to do two days in a row. When you do this, you do two consecutive days. You decide what days of the week you're gonna do. You can change it from week to week, it's fine. You count the birds that visit, you do tallies over the, the two days. Um, you count the highest number of a species you see at a time. So if you have one cardinal visit and then two hours later you see another cardinal, you can't count two, even if you see a male and a female. To be scientifically accurate, you count them once. I know even though you kind of know, oh, but it was a different bird. For feeder watch, you're not supposed to do that. And then you enter your data online. It's a very simple form. And they actually even have a phone app now that you know you have to go online to do it. But I think online is powerful because then the kids can see it. And what's cool is their online form has pictures of the birds. It makes it really easy to fill in. So let's look at the next slide. You choose what your count days are. Like I said, it goes November 1st through April 30th. You select two consecutive days. Um, you can do it weekly, you can do it once a month, however you wanna do it. Um, even if you count once all winter, your, your data is valuable. Now, this is what my setup looked like um, when I had a feeding station right outside my windows at a, in a portable, and I just had a little desk in the back and the kids could take turns being back there, you know, when it wasn't a distraction to their work and they really enjoyed doing it. If we saw something really, really cool, I'd stop the class and we'd all look. I was lucky I had big windows. Let's go to the next slide, please. What if you can't identify a bird? You're like, oh my gosh, look at this hummingbird with the purple throat, which would be a really spectacular one for Florida, but next. So on the website, under the tab for learn, they have a section on how to identify birds. Plus we are gonna do, um, one of our upcoming programs will be a county, actually the next one, accounting birds for science. I'm gonna go over the um, Merlin. That's another thing you can use. And let's go to the next one. Our next webinar is on December 7th. And again, it's gonna be on counting birds for science because we'll be getting into Christmas bird count and it's a good time. That's another thing you can do. You don't have to count birds at your feeder. You can actually, I used to do a morning club and we'd go out once a month and we count birds. And it was a great thing for kids to learn to do. And they got really excited about it. And let's go to the next one, please. So if you haven't had the opportunity to get a free Pennington window feeder, we, we did talk about this on our Feathered Friends um, webinar. This is how you can get a free feeder. Even if you're watching this on Zoom, I'm sorry, on YouTube, you can still do it one time. So go to the next slide and I'll show you what you need to do. So you're gonna go to this website, which is www.birds.cornell.edu backslash K12 backslash feathered dash friends. And you will see, um, where did you download the lessons, which are great lessons and I have a whole recorded webinar on YouTube on Feathered Friends. You'll love that. It's great for um, K through five, could be modified to middle school. Um, you download this and then they're gonna send you an email with uh, how to get your free feeder. And you do have to pay shipping, but it's a cool little feeder. And I have one outside my window where I just work from home. Let's go to the next slide. So here's our, uh, we have a YouTube channel and there's a 21 minute video on using that curriculum. 
So check that out if you haven't already. And last but not least, we're going to skip the questions for tonight in the interest of time. You can email me. So any questions, you can email me at education at orangeaudubonfl.org. I'd be happy to help you out. I hope that you enjoy feeding birds and you're going to be surprised at all the inquiry that it's going to um, create with your students. And you're going to see some really amazing things. So thank you for joining us and see you on December 7th. Thank you. Good night.